everyone, it's Kit again. Um, so last time in my last informative video, I talked about um, altar jobs and I discussed protectors, persecutors, littles, and fragments. Um, if you want to see that video, if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link in the description. If you have already seen that video, then go ahead and click it anyway, because then we get views and then we get put on suggested watch lists and then we get traffic and everybody gets educated and we get our little ego satiated. So yeah, go ahead and uh, just give it a little watch there. Have it play in the background. Mute it. We don't care. Today I want to talk more about inside helpers or like non-traditional helpers. First one I want to talk about is soothers or caretakers. They'll be like very maternal and try to offer comfort in any way they can. Um, they're usually really gentle and stuff. Oftentimes they are older figures but they don't always have to be. It just is kind of someone who the host or the system or whatever who can they can look up to. Then there is gatekeeper. Gate keeper is the name you we give to an altar who kind of runs the system. Usually they are an inside only. In our case, Jacob is our gatekeeper and he is almost exclusively on the inside. He comes out occasionally outside of therapy, but that is only under like super extreme circumstances. Most of the time he's just hanging out in the headspace and he has the ability to kind of place people in different spots. Keep altars from fronting or restricting access to different areas of the headspace for certain altars. There are times like when Wynn is going to like go see a scary movie and we don't want the littles to see, Jacob can block out the inner world. He can make this big wall that separates whoever's out front and what they're seeing usually Wynn and what we're seeing. So Jacob is boss kind of <laughs> in that way. So that's his role as gatekeeper. Another inside helper is the memory holder. And now the memory holder is another really self-explanatory names. Like these names aren't complicated guys, come on. A memory holder has the memories. And in our case, Jacob is the memory holder. He was uh, headmate number one. He was the very, 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 very first to be created alongside Wynn. He has been with her almost her whole life. He has seen everybody be born, he has witnessed every single event, and so it's only logical that he would hold the memory. So what we do in our system is we have little colored balls that we put our memories into and he keeps them in this big chest. Over time we've had to really up the security around these little memory spheres that we have. He used to just like carry them with him but then in therapy one day a memory because it was too close to the surface since he had it on his person came out and just sent everything into a tailspin. He didn't mean to share the repressed memory so vividly. And so he created this little, um, kind of like a treasure chest that he has neatly organized everybody's memory spheres by color and he tucks them inside there. We again had flashback. It wasn't quite as vivid, but he really wants to be able to control when repressed memories come out, whose memories we access, how much detail is shared. And so now the treasure chest not only has a lock and key, but it also like goes down underground into <laughs> this like metal underground bunker thing that he can like remote access lifted up on an elevator. We've really heightened security uh, on, on memories. So these two are like integral to our functionality and our lives and and we see them and talk to them and interact with them every single day but they don't really ever come out so you will probably never ever ever meet them yeah so those are our two main inside helpers twin altars is another type of altar that is labeled because of specific characteristics twin altars are apparently not super uncommon basically like they're birthed at the same time and they usually have very opposing characteristics jacob and karen are twins they were born in the same moment jacob is very secure he is is very direct. He is very uh, stoic. Karen is just a bundle of emotions. She's kind of all over the place. She's very reactive. She's very sensitive. Then there's an altar type that we don't have in our system, but other people do. And these are like robot altars, machine altars, or like inanimate object altars. Basically that altar exists because those things don't have emotion. Robots 
are meant to perform tasks and they don't feel. People can have inanimate objects, like they are a tree. One of their altars is a tree and they come out and they don't move and they don't feel anything emotionally or whatever. You can imagine why in a traumatic situation, an altar that cannot feel emotion would be a really awesome defense mechanism. Sort of similar, but not totally similar is an animal altar. Uh, we used to think Karen was an animal altar. She did take animal forms for a very long time. Now we just know she's a sweet little five-year-old with a really sharp temper. <laughs> animal altars can come in a range of being like completely animal to being kind of like animalistic, anthropomorphic morphic, still able to communicate like a human. In my other video I talked about with Littles, it is ridiculous and unrealistic to expect Littles in a DID system to behave exactly like a child outside in the outside world would be at that same age. The same with animal alters. There's like a mindset and a form that is distinctly animal, but that does not mean that they are going to behave the same way you would expect to see an actual dog behave, you know, out in the real world. And then lastly, uh, still building on that same train, non-human alters like Mistletoe and me. Uh, we are fairies. Why are we fairies? I don't know. Uh, I just know we both have wings and we both have really pointy ears and that is literally the only thing we have in common. One of the ones I didn't put on my list, so I'm gonna kind of free it here, are dream altars. This is a little odd, but there are altars who, you know like lucid dreaming, people can lucid dream. There are altars who can interact and send messages and even just fully shape dreams. And now this can be a really good thing. Jacob and Jonathan are able to help work through issues with Wynn while she's asleep in her dreams. That is how she actually discovered that they were real. She woke up from a dream one day and she was like, wow, there was just something about that dream. And, and the presence of those two uh, dream guys <laughs> uh, just didn't go away. And so she was like, I f is this something more? And she kind of like reached into the headspace and discovered that yeah, those were the two altars who kind of run the system from the background that she hadn't been aware of before. Mistletoe can also control dreams, and she does it to be a vengeful <laughs> and give nightmares to win when she doesn't do something that Mistletoe likes. She hasn't done that recently, so that's nice. So it can be a positive or a negative aspect that alters have the ability to control dreams. I don't, I wish I did, cause then we would have party dreams every night. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Jesus. Those are um, more alter jobs, expanded alter jobs. Let me know if you have any more questions. Let me know in the comments if there is an alter type in your system or that you have heard of before if you don't have a system, uh, post it in the comments. Let me know, tell me about it. And if you have any questions that don't pertain to alter jobs and just want us to make a video about a topic, also let us know about that. And then I'm gonna do that really trashy YouTube thing where I say like, comment, and subscribe. That is everything from me for now. Be well, I love you. Mwah.